Welcome to our YouTube channel where wisdom meets inspiration. In this channel, we share valuable insights to help you become the best version of yourself. Our content is designed to uplift your spirit and enrich your life. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to stay connected with this incredible journey. Click the subscribe button below. Uh sometimes a spiritual quest is de- described as a desire for perfection. we're all reaching for perfection i think that's i don't like that way of describing it uh but swami vivekananda himself has used it that you cannot have perfection in this limited world only the unlimited is perfect only the infinite is perfect brahman is perfect so in if you have if your the way of thinking is i am trying to be perfect then know that as body we cannot be perfect as mind we cannot be perfect but as beyond body and mind brahman as existence consciousness bliss already perfect you to realize that perfection within each of us and to manifest it in our lives so that's one way of putting it i did you notice i didn't use the word perfection i used the word completeness or fullness purnam purnam is fullness another word you can use is infinity anantam limitlessness these are less loaded terms otherwise as you said what happens is there's something called perfectionism so this drives us to um kind of try to attain a goal which is almost impossible to attain in this this life and as a result we become a menace to ourselves and everybody else around <laughs> i met an um uh, this is a little tragic but i met an old swami they they warned me about him he's quite bitter and he's critical of everybody and everything so you have to put up with his criticism so i went and bowed down to the swami and the swami started talking and as advertised he was critical about everything and everybody but then he said something that has remained with me he said when i became a monk ah, my desire was to be perfect and then i thought ah that's where you have sabotaged yourself you cannot be and we are weak creatures so we impose our demands for perfection on others on institutions and people who, none of which can be perfect and then we become bitter and disappointed and frustrated in life i am not perfect and nobody else is perfect and so it's all horrible no it isn't it isn't which reflection is perfect no reflection is perfect see the all this we what we are studying now higher and higher and better and better reflections but they are all reflections the basic imperfection is there what is the imperfection none of them are the original thing and the original thing is never a reflection now listen to this uh, quote from a very well not a well known but a great philosopher who's been forgotten so not not known um f h bradley he was a british idealist philosopher in the turn of the sen- century um Bertrand Russell and others were junior uh, contemporaries. So he has this very nice quote: "Appearance is never real, and real reality never appears. Appearance is never real, and reality never appears." Now look at the reflected face and the original face example. Appearance is never real. That's not your real face, and the reality never appears. The reality is always here. What appears is a reflection. reflection can come closer and closer to the reality and that's what we call perfection so this perfection is a double edged sword one it improves us with this desire for perfection we become better at our work at our behavior in our thinking at head heart and hand all will improve if we have the quest for perfection um i'll show you something this quest for perfection very interesting uh but the other side of it is it can lead to unhappiness and frustration because ultimately that will never happen uh, at this physical level or at this mental level or social level no no amount of perfection can no real perfection cannot be reflected here the real perfection is brahman but let me tell you a little about this quest for perfection this might seem a little silly but it's not meant for this audience it meant for kids so there was this management consultant who came to the school where i taught I mean, I was a brahmachari, young young uh, monastic novice. I joined their Ramakrishna mission, Vidyapit Deogar. It's an ancient temple town called Vaidyanath Dham Deogar, and 
many people come there too as a pilgrim. This famous management consultant who would never come to such a small town otherwise, he had come to the temple and he came to our ashram. And I thought, this is the opportunity. We never get such a person to speak to youngsters. You know, they are only for corporate uh, executives. So could you just talk to our, in a grade 10 kids, 16-year-olds? Could you talk to them? He had just five minutes before that. He had to leave to catch a train. So five minutes, a five-minute talk. And what he said that day, I have not forgotten till today. And then tell you, I can guarantee none of you will forget till the end of our lives, you know, what he said in those five minutes. He said, all those kids were sitting, I was also sitting there. He came in front of us and he said, look, I'm going to do something and I want you to do that. Agreed? They said, yes. So let's all do it if you want, those of you like. So raise your hands. And raise your hands a little higher. Okay, put your hands down. That's it. And then he said, notice, when I asked you to raise your hands, you raised your hands. And then when I asked you to raise your hands a little higher, you raised them a little higher, meaning in the first time you did not raise it to the maximum possible extent. And this is a great fact about human psychology. Whatever we do in our lives, we don't do it to the, our, the, the, the capacity which we have. And the maximum capacity which we have, we don't do it. Uh, and then he added, except for very little kids. They're very enthusiastic. You tell them, raise hands. Otherwise, as we grow older, we become lax. We all know. He says, I will not give you advice on how to improve yourselves. You all know where the shoe pinches, where you are falling behind, where you could do better. So these three things which Vivekananda talked about, head, heart and hand. I'm just quoting him. Head, heart and hand. Every day think, how can my thinking studies for kids there? How can my studies be better? You know how, what, what you're doing less, what you could be doing more. Just a little bit more. How much better? This much. This much better. Just a little better in your studies. And your heart. You're feeling for the other students and the teachers and the staff here and the parents and people around you. Your feelings for them. How can you be a little better? How can you feel a little more for others? And express it in your behavior. Just a little. How much? Just a little. And then the third one, he said, hand, work. When you're playing and working and whatever you're doing in life, how can I be a little better? Just a little bit, just a little bit better. In which place am I doing a little less than I could be doing? Do that. And he says, there's a limit to how much you can raise your hands, but there's no limit to how much you can, you know, in your thinking, in your feeling and in your work, how much better you can become. Thus, day by day, make that little change. Later, I realized it's a Japanese Kaizen principle, you know. Yeah, so that's what he was telling us. But the way he put it to the kids, I've never forgotten, you know, this thing. <laughs> yeah, so that's perfectionism. And so it's a good pursuit, but keep it under control. Don't end up like that bitter old monk. Become Swami Vivekanandas Messenger. Share the video with three of your friends.